Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplifier's tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at Porter's diamond model. Michael Porter's renowned diamond model helps us understand why certain nations are more competitive than others for certain types of industries. For instance, why is Belgium so good with beer? Why is Portugal well known for wine? Why is Germany so good with cars and so on? It analyzes why certain nations or marketplaces are better equipped than others to harbor certain types of industries. It can be used to understand the source of a na nation's uh, competitive advantage and also thereby know how to obtain such an advantage for other countries. It can help international organizations formulate strategies regarding investing and operating in different markets. Now let's look at the actual model. So there are four factors in the model that actually determine national competitive advantage. These four factors are uh, firm strategy, structure and rivalry, demand conditions, related and supporting industries and factor conditions. If all four factors are favorable, domestic companies uh, will actually continually innovate and upgrade themselves and thereby stay competitive. The competitiveness in the overall marketplace that will result from this is what actually helps companies compete and excel internationally and establish their dominance. There are two other supporting factors which will continually influence all of these four factors and these factors are the role of the government and chance. Now let's look at the uh, factors individually. The first factor is firm strategy, structure and rivalry. Now this factor relates to the domestic rivalry that exists in the home market between contemporary companies. Now, healthy domestic rivalry between similar companies in the domestic market is critical. The more intense this domestic rivalry is, the more companies are actually pushed to innovate and improve in order to actually maintain their competitive advantage. Domestic rivalry basically keeps these companies uh, in the domestic market. They, it keeps these companies on their toes and actually helps them compete and, and succeed in the international context. A good example is the German automobile industry, the renowned German automobile industry, which boasts of brands like Mercedes, BMW and Volkswagen, which actually manage to keep each other on their toes all the time because uh, none, of, none of these companies can actually uh, be complacent at any point in time and they therefore stay at the top of their game and they can also then compete internationally. The next factor is demand conditions. Now this factor measures the magnitude of favorable demand that exists in the local market. A demanding customer base in the domestic market actually pushes companies to strive hard to meet the demand, innovate and grow. Now this growth and a growing demand gives companies the ammunition to actually push boundaries and grow overseas. Nations therefore see growth in industries with a high local demand. So this is quite obvious to understand because if there is a lot of demand for your product in the local marketplace, in the domestic market, then it will keep you on your toes. You have to actually try your level best and be on the top of your game at all times to actually satisfy the local demand and that would actually equip you to take the business to the next level. The next factor is related and supporting industries. Success for a company often depends on successful partnerships, alliances and a network of strong suppliers. When these factors are in place, companies can remain competitive and provide good value for customers to actually remain competitive. It can take decades and a lot of government infrastructure in creating an ecosystem of suppliers and domestic companies with the potential to actually help each other out and excel in the global marketplace. The existence of such an ecosystem for certain industries in certain countries actually lays the groundwork for successful enterprises that can actually venture out and dominate the local marketplaces. A good example is the existence of Silicon Valley in, in some countries wherein we have several tech companies and startups collaborating, existing together, collaborating and mutually benefiting one another. Or you can also imagine constructions companies, construction companies existing alongside suppliers of raw materials. So as you can see, related supportive companies will always grow together. They'll always support one another and 
they will benefit with the other person's benefit and then the last condition the last factor is factor conditions factor conditions refers to the availability of different types of resources in certain countries and markets and these can be basic natural or or advanced or so-called created factors so basic factors will include natural resources and unskilled manpower and then advanced factors will actually include skilled labor or specialist knowledge so advanced factors are the factors that will that will come to to a nation with a lot of hard work put in with a lot of effort with a lot of investment and according to porter competitive advantage comes from the presence of these advanced factors and by their retention growth and development it's not entirely dependent on basic factors because basic factors can be can actually go away or it can be replicated there will be other people making use of it but advanced factors need a lot of investment they need a lot of harboring and they need a lot of, they need to be retained to actually retain competitive advantage now let's look at the two supporting factors that we spoke about government porter believed that governments can actually be quite a driving factor and a catalyst to ensure that all factors all four factors can be developed and retained in a country although governments cannot actually create competitive advantages by themselves they can ensure that an ecosystem exists that can actually help in their creation and development governments can actually help create advanced factor conditions for instance by building robust infrastructure education systems and healthcare they can put laws in place to ensure healthy rivalry and fair practices in the marketplace to to retain supporting industries thereby contributing to that factor they can also encourage domestic populations and and raise awareness and demand for products to ensure that there is a high level of 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 demand so to ensure a high level of demand conditions so as you can see government can actually directly or indirectly influence all of the factors and the last factor is chance now chance or luck actually relates the to the role of uncontrollable external influences on a country or industry now external influences can be natural disasters war or various other po- political situations that can actually provide competitive advantages or disadvantages to various industries now such external unpredictable events are are beyond the control of most con- countries and organizations as you'd imagine they can actually break certain industries and they can actually nurture others now the recent 2020 coronavirus uh, disaster for instance created a, a, a rather disadvantageous position for for several industries like the leisure industry the hospitality industry the travel industry etc but there are certain industries which obviously gained from the disaster because there are certain industries which which would be catering to the supply of masks with the supply of pharmaceuticals drugs etc there are so many industries that have actually benefited even from a disaster of such a global scale the brexit situation is another example which is uh, it's a situation which is affecting and will continue to affect a lot of organizations and industries which couldn't actually directly influence the event now let's look at an example to try and understand how how the factors come into play for for a certain type of an industry in a certain country so let's look at the belgian beer industry now firm strategy structure and rivalry belgium has more breweries per capita than any country in the world and this actually produces an intense rivalry between firms to actually gain a competitive advantage so they are there actually exists a a very competitive environment in the actual country because of domestic factors demand conditions beer has actually always been an integral part of belgian identity and is also known as their national beverage so local demand for quality beer has always therefore been quite high so you can imagine that because the demand is quite high you have to raise the standards and 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 keep the standards at that high level at all times 
related and supporting industries. Now, Belgian breweries are usually located to be in proximity to farms, and then the farms support the industry in, in more than one way. This actually enables both industries to support one another, and it also enables fast production times. Now, the next factor is factor conditions. Belgium actually has very good quality natural ingredients for beer production as well, and also a competent pool of skilled labor. Government. Governments in Belgium have always invested in education and training in relation to the beer industry. Provisions have also been put in place to ensure that brewing actually remains cost effective more often than not. Chance. Now, beer consumption is actually high in most european countries and actually and it's it's quite advantageous for belgium to be in cl in close proximity to a lot of european countries and also for belgium to be in the european union so it makes it easier for them to to distribute beer across uh, all of the other european markets so as as you can see belgium has retained the competitive advantage due to all of the factors illustrated in the porter's diamond model so you can see here that there is a way for a country to actually get to that level of a competitive advantage and to retain it okay so that was a brief introduction of uh, the porter's diamond model thank you very much for your attendance as always i hope that was beneficial for you uh, as always please like this tutorial please uh, share the content on this channel subscribe if you're new Support us on the Facebook page as well, and I hope you continue keeping care, taking care of yourself. Okay, thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.